These videos are a stream recording hybrid. Random commentary based on the stream chat may be found. Stupid gifs found from the stream chat will also be found. Viewer discretion may be advised. Alright guys, welcome back to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. So, in the last episode, we got here to the hospital and took on a little quiz and proved how little I know about medical science. Yeah, embarrassing. So in this episode, we're talking to Ushin, see if he, has, he doesn't have a side quest. Hey there. Um... So, do I need a turkey sandwich? Because I think I ate mine just like yesterday in game. Hmm. Oh well. I'll have to bring him a turkey sandwich sometime, but he doesn't have a side quest for me right now. So, uh, maybe next chapter or something. Either way, right now I need to head outside. I have other work to do right now. Um, this way, maybe? No, I went the wrong way. Well, Agent Honor. And now if I run down this way, I should be at the lobby, right? This is not the lobby where I thought it was going to be. Through this door, maybe? Yeah, this is the lobby, alright. So we're done here. I can't do the side quest that's outside the hospital right now because that requires for it to be raining. I cannot go to do uh, to steal Keith's guitar because that requires for it to be raining. I cannot go meet Emily at her house because that requires for it to be raining. And I swear, every time I walk outside, it sounds like somebody's following me and it's weird. Oh well. Um, I guess I can get a ride somewhere, or what should I do? Here, I'm going to check my uh, available quests right now. Twenty-one. Yeah, that requires for it to be raining. 34. I can go and do more of those, apparently. <laughs> Alright. So, Mr. Ryan has said that if I go around the entire hospital, that's how I get the trading card. At least that's what he believes off the top of his head. He's not quite positive because, you know, this. while he has played this game a couple times, you can't always remember everything in every game. I mean, it's, it's just not possible. And if you do, then I, uh, I want your powers. Give them to me. I could totally break down that fence and go up there, but I'm not going to. No, nope. ends there. Can I actually, uh... No, I just kicked the ball. Disappointing. Uh-huh. Well... How do I get into that grass area? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I can shoot the lock from this side. Well, I can't shoot it from this side, apparently. Okay, I hate how you can't look up very far. Ryan, I'm not sure I can look up that high. Apparently Ryan's sure he knows what it is this time.
Oh, okay, it's a racing point. All right. Um, there's no racing point available to me right now, though. So until that racing point is available, I will ignore this and come back later. For now, I think I'm going to teleport out of here. Um... I mean, sure, why not? Heaven Hell Gas Station. And Ryan, about the inconveniencing George and making him drive me around? Yes, that is exactly what I'm doing. Even in the dead of night, I will make him drive me around. He has no choice in the matter. He agreed to give me a lift whenever I needed it. Also, for some reason, this car is just the, 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 sh the, the best car that I've driven thus far. It's going much faster, it feels like, than the other ones turns around faster, things like that. Oh hey, it's Jack the Raging Bull. Fill her up. See, so if, if, if you spit on my car one more time, I'm going to be pissed. Apparently I cannot give him more money right now. I'll fill up on gas and just move on from here. Bye. And he just calls me craphead and leaves. I'm like your best customer. Yeah, according to Mr. Ryan, I should probably move on to the main story now. So I'll just drive there since it's really nice, and while I'm driving there, I'll even play myself a little bit of a song. Just because I've been listening to this music for a while, let's do this. Alright, now... Use my cigarettes. Look at this cigarette! All right, come on, just a little bit further. All right, that should be late enough. Do I have anything to eat, or do I even need something? Oh, I won't even bother. Just gonna run straight up there. Oh, hey, George. Everyone's waiting. Let's go to the community center, Zach. Apparently, George doesn't want to talk to me. If I swear, if he complains about me going in before him, I'm just going to throw a fit. Greenvale Community Center. Now that's an impressive building. Clock Tower is impressive, too. Oh yeah, the nice music starts kicking in. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time either. Well, that was a tough role. I was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan, from the Federal Bureau of Investigations, wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. 
and to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please, stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age, please, guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims. Oh. Looks like our art gallery woman is here. Bar owner and singer. Oh no, maybe she's not the art gallery person. Who's the fashionably late one? That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Okay. Excuse me. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm gonna say he does not look alive. When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. His rhyme scheme is weird. And also, that's disturbing. How did he get down those stairs? Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zack, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. All right. Oh, Thomas, how about we have a chat? Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Uh, I do, actually. But why? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. Okay. If it's gonna help you any. <sighs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... <laughs> did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. I don't know when he got that done, but 
We've all been through the 80s. Gay. He's in love with George. Gay. Let's jump down. Quite a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Mr. Francis York Moore. The purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then, your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be. Informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. Mr. Francis York Moore, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Huh. Apparently if you're AFK for long enough, you'll actually start telling you what to do. I did not know that. Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead, even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic, gain one, and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner, and she'd always have a smile on her face, always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> Profiling start. Oh god, that face is disturbing. Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. She seemed disturbed by that statement. Well, found some cigarettes. But apparently I need to get up for a second longer because the dog is barking right outside my door. And apparently if she needs something, she's just going to stand there and bark because that's what my mother and brother taught her to do. <laughs> Be right back. Agent Honor. Hey, Quint, Richard. Quint, you're here too. I didn't think you were the town meeting kind of guy. A friend of mine was killed, you know, man? I'm not letting this one go quietly. But I'll do anything to help you catch the scumbag who did this. Thank you. But vigilance is not justice. Nothing good will come from desiring simple revenge. Oh, come on, I'm not that stupid. But I'm frustrated a bit just thinking that there's nothing I can do about it. We each have a role, a purpose in life, a raison d'etre. Don't forget that. I know, I know. Just don't preach to me. You're sounding like my old man. Zack, wow. 
I'm in shock like a weasel in an electric chair. You just made me realize that I must be getting old. <laughs> okay. I haven't met you yet. Who are you? Good evening, Agent. Oh, gosh. Good evening, Mr. Brian, the gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian, I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Hmm... Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Anna, blonde hair, so bright. Uh... There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zach. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. Okay. Let's speak to Richard while we're here. See what he has to say. So, finding your way around okay? Yes, pretty much. But some people are hard to get along with. <laughs> people problems, huh? I thought city folks were used to things like that. There's lots more people in the city than there are here. Well, that's true. But I started simplifying things a bit. Here's my new way of thinking. It's simple, really. There's only three types of people. Criminals, victims, and investigators. Everyone else are just vegetables. Vegetables called other people. You really are strange. That's all right for investigation. That makes sense, and that's why only like thirty people in this entire town are actually important. The rest are all people I don't even ever speak to or ever given names because they're the vegetables of this world, I guess. Agent York, you make any progress? Of course, plenty. Uh, tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was her sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Um... Uh, but don't go too hard on her, okay? Yeah, I've already met Sally. She's kind of insane. Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zack. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. All right, we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue this investigation next time. So next time on Let's Play Deadly Premonition, we're gonna be really just investigating the area. This is what the chapter is about: talking to everyone, and learning everyone's names. See you guys next time.